Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? You look wonderful. <laughs> I see a lot of smiling faces out there today. Um, I'm Leah Van Wilgen from the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and I welcome you all this morning to today's ceremony. All across the nation this week, um, the U U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the district courts are all working really hard to naturalize a lot of folks in honor of Veterans Day this week. So we do have some service members in our audience today, and I'd like to just take a moment to say thank you for all of those who serve in the United States Armed Forces. And this... And this wonderful venue, the Connecticut Old State House, has been so gracious to host our ceremony today. I would like to introduce to all of you now Sally Whipple, the Executive Director of the Connecticut Old State House. Ms. Whipple? Hello, welcome everybody. We are so pleased and proud and happy to have you here today at Connecticut's Old State House. This building is called by some, including me, Connecticut's most sacred civic space. Hartford was founded on the site of this building. This building was erected more than 100 years later, and it served as a seat of government for Connecticut and for Hartford for a century. Today, we open its doors to invite people in to help them learn about Connecticut's past, but also about citizenship in Connecticut and the importance of citizenship. And we try to talk about people from the past and people from the present who have worked hard to affect change in Connecticut to make things better. So we feel it is a real tribute to the old State House to have you here today. We are so happy to host this event. This room is a very historic courtroom. Many, many important things have happened in this room, but I can't imagine any that could be more important than what will happen here today. So I welcome you and thank you for being here. Thank you, Ms. Whipple. If everyone would please rise and remain standing, please, while Chief Warrant Officer Voidy of Connecticut National Guard and his guardsmen post our nation's colors, followed by a rendition of our national anthem and God Bless America by the Coastal Chordsmen.
I would now like to call forward Deputy Clerk of Court Robert Wood to convene this special, ses special ses session of the United States District Court. Mr. Wood. All rise. It's a special ceremony of the Honorable United States District Court for this discussion is now open with the Honorable Donna F. Martinez presiding, the United States Magistrate Judge here in the District of Connecticut. Good morning. Be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome. I'm Judge Martinez. Welcome to those of you who will become citizens this morning. Welcome to your families and friends. Welcome, veterans. We'll begin by hearing the motions of the Bureau of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. The name changes shall be granted. The clerk of the court will deliver the oath. Mr. Clerk. Yes, would all new citizens please stand and raise your right hand? I hereby declare an oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate state or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, I support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that are bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that are bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that are performed non combatant service in the armed forces of the United States of America when required by law, that are performed work of national importance in the civilian direction when required by law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Please respond. Thank you. Be seated. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, it's both my pleasure and my honor to preside this morning as you're made citizens of the United States. Your presence here today is an honor to the United States and to all Americans. You honor us with your decision to become Americans. You enrich our country by bringing to it the heritage the language and the culture of the countries of your birth. Now, you know just from looking around the room today that you come from many different backgrounds. I'm told that here in this room today we have 12 countries represented. Let me tell you what they are. Albania, China, Guyana, India, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Kenya, Peru, Poland, Uruguay, and Vietnam. The curious thing about that list of different countries is that it is typically American. Ours is a country of immigrants. Nearly every family in America at one time came from some other place. <clears throat> We're proud of that heritage. Here's an illustration of the American attitude toward immigrants. Did you know that the United States accepts more refugees than all countries on the earth combined? Did you know that last year over 700,000 people became naturalized American citizens. Here in Connecticut alone, 
we naturalized last year almost 10,000 people. It is because we came from other places that we are a country of great diversity and great complexity. The United States is known for being a country where its citizens are of different cultures, different colors, different looks, and different languages. I enjoy cultural diversity within my own family. I'm the grandchild of immigrants. My mother is French, my father is Greek, my present name is Martinez, which is Spanish. It's an American combination. It's against that background that I ask you to remember your past as you become Americans, for as you remember your cultural heritage and you practice ethnic traditions, you make our country a richer place for all of us to live. On Veterans Day, we celebrate those who have fought to make our country a safer place to live. My father is a proud veteran. He enlisted at age 18, right out of high school, to fight in World War II. He was stationed in the Philippines. He was part of a group known as the Jolly Rogers. He, grew, he flew B-24 bombers known as Liberators. He's almost 89, and aside from his family, his service is one of the greatest sources of pride in his life. All of you are familiar with the great gifts that come to those of us who are American, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the right to vote are important examples. There's another gift, the gift of education. My grandmother came to this country by herself when she, from Greece, when she was 14 years old. She spoke no English and she could not read or write in any language. She died having had no formal education. She never learned to read. I, her grandchild, have 22 years of American education. Kids, that's grade 22. <laughs> All but first grade in public schools. It's because of the American gift of education that I have the wonderful privilege and honor today of making you citizens of the United States. So, that's a part of my story. Each of you has your own story. Remember it, tell it, so that your children and grandchildren can tell it with pride. Ladies and gentlemen, we all give thanks for the things that make us American. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you Representative Leslie Zupkis, forgive me, the 89th General Assembly District. She will lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. Thank you for that. Um, I would just like to introduce Senator Don Donald Williams of the 29th Senate District. Senator Williams. Good morning. Could we have all of the new citizens of the United States please stand? And could everyone else honor them with a round of applause? Congratulations, you may be seated. My name is Don Williams. I am a state senator. I serve as president of the Senate here in the state of Connecticut. I come from the northeastern 
part of our state and the town of Brooklyn. Uh, but my story is a little more detailed than that. Uh, as the judge said, we are a nation of immigrants. My relatives came from England and Scotland and Wales and Germany. Almost all of my relatives were immigrants. You might think, well, aren't we all immigrants? Well, part of, of the, my family uh, come from a Native American tribe, the Choctaw tribe that originated in what is now the state of Mississippi, uh, but then they were moved on to Oklahoma. So some of my relatives actually predate the founding of the United States of America and folks coming over to this country, starting with Christopher Columbus onward. So Sally Whipple, Judge Martinez, and our new citizens, it's an honor to be here with you today. You are the new caretakers of the American dream. You're being sworn in here today as citizens is part of that dream. Oftentimes, at ceremonies like this, we talk about our founding fathers, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, those who drafted the great Constitution of the United States that provides us with democracy, a representative democracy based in the people, and Thomas Jefferson, who drafted the Declaration of Independence that says all men, and today we also say and women, are created equal. All men and women are created equal. We talk about the founders, but the founding fathers of America are only a small part of who we are and our history. Really, America is you. It's the citizens. It's the people of this country. And when I talk about the citizens of this country, I mean the immigrants who came to America. In the last 100 years, America has fought in two world wars to preserve human dignity. We've reached for the stars and landed on the moon. We've embraced civil rights, cured diseases, and helped connect the entire world with new technologies. America is a beacon of hope around the world. But in reality, the secret of our success in this country is the fact that we import the greatest talent. You are part of our continuing story. You are part of that success and the talent. And you follow in the tradition of all of us who came from other countries to this country to make America. You renew our country. Time and time again, America is at its strongest when we openly accept immigrants when we view immigrants not as competition, but as new recruits carrying forward the torch of freedom and liberty. You know, people say that America is the greatest country in the world. But we're only great if our people make this country great. America has never been perfect. No country is perfect. We ended slavery in the Civil War in the 1860s with the 14th and 15th Amendments to our Constitution, granting citizenship to blacks and ending slavery. Women could not vote in the United States until the early part of the 20th century. My relatives, who were part of the Choctaw tribe, who were here before any other folks came to this country, 
They were not citizens until 1924, when an act of Congress was passed making Native Americans, American Indians, citizens of the United States. This country is the greatest country in the world when we make it so. You are now part of an incredible tradition. You have opportunity, you have freedom, and you are part of a tradition. The obligation that all of us have is to use that freedom to its fullest and to make this a better country. So congratulations. I am thrilled that you are all here, that you are in the United States of America, that you are in Connecticut, my state, and that now you are part of a great human experiment in freedom, in democracy, and in making our country and the world better. Congratulations. Thank you for those remarks, Senator Williams. I would now like to call forward once again the coastal, co the, excuse me, the coastal Corsman. Sorry, gentlemen. Uh, as Senator Williams said, one of the things that makes this country great is that there is an ongoing journey here. And that it's, uh, you know, there are times, as, as many of the exhibits in this uh, State House testify, where we didn't get it right the first time, but we work to make it better. And one of the things that allows us to do that is this unending belief in the dignity of each and every human being. And I think it's fitting on this occasion to uh, perform a song that we borrowed from a couple other lands. This one was by a South African expatriate named Labi Sifre, who was living in England at the time of apartheid in South Africa, and wrote this piece to give a voice to those who have none. And since that time, this uh, piece has been co-opted as an anthem for all sorts of civil rights causes. So we thought it was appropriate uh, to serve as a reminder that we all as Americans have a responsibility to look out for the dignity of each person and to remember to stay strong in the face of adversity and keep working until we have it right. This is called Something Inside So Strong. Oh, you're doing me wrong, so wrong. You thought that I'm pride. 
Thank you once again, gentlemen. Um, so we would like to uh, distribute the naturalization certificates. If I can ask the USCIS staff members to come forward, Ms. Dyer, Mr. Seagrave, and if I can um, welcome all of our distinguished guests uh, to uh, come forward uh, by the podium here, and uh, we will be calling your name. As we call your name, please come on up for the presentation of your certificate, and uh, we'd like to offer all of you our congratulations. Nikaya Nicola Lamont, Jamaica. <laughs> right. 
Dane St. Albans Shields, Jamaica. Katip Halili, Albania. Sevravanan Balakrishnan, India. Lak Kwa Quang Nguyen, Vietnam. Phuong Truc Nguyen Din, Vietnam. Giovanna Saucy, Italy. Paula Fonseca, Italy. Errol Rainford White, Jamaica. Umwadi Luki, Guyana. Janet Elaine Wynn, Jamaica. <laughs> Rong Wang, China. <laughs> Tristan Caden Corey Spencer, Jamaica. <laughs> Babitha. Pola Katil, Matthew, India. Parvez Beg, India. Hong Nok Lam, Vietnam. Anden Surma, Albania. <laughs> Donette Greenwood, Jamaica. <laughs> Alyssa Amanda Solomon, Guyana. Ainat Dorabantu, Israel. Anna Zilk Zikla, Poland. Anne Hazel Wanjiku. Get Kanyo Mugo, Kenya. <laughs> Neil Armando Malpartida, Peru. Wen Jun, whoops. Wen Jun, Vietnam. <laughs> Daniel Andres Pernas Pachi, Uruguay.
Well, I don't see, is Chief uh, Warrant Officer Voidy handy to retire the colors, do we know? Or, uh, it's okay if not. <laughs> Okay, that, no, no, that's fine. Uh, if I could call uh, uh, Robert, D Deputy Clerk Robert Wood, please, to to adjourn the court. All rise. This special ceremony of the Honorary United States District Court now stands adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations to all.